Hello and welcome back to the course of Basic Electrical Engineering. In this today's lecture, I am going to start new unit, unit number four, chapter number four, that is electrical machines. Different kind of electrical machines I am going to discuss in this today's lecture and upcoming video lectures of electrical machines. In this today's lecture, I am going to discuss three-phase induction motors. Basically, machine can be a motor or can be a generator. So we are going to study different kind of motor and generator in the upcoming video lectures of electrical machines. So let us start with the first induction motors and introduction about the motor. So basically what is motor? So motor is an electrical device machine which converts electrical energy into the mechanical energy and which is then supplied to the different types of load. Induction motors are the motors which works on alternating voltage. There are different types of motors are there. AC motor, DC motor, EC generator, DC generator. That I am going to discuss in the up upcoming video lecture. But in today's video lecture, we will be starting with the first induction motor. Induction motors are nothing but the motors which works on AC supply, AC voltage. Now we know there are two types of AC voltage we have already discussed in the uh, uh, EC circuits chapter unit that is a uh, single phase supply and three phase supply, single phase voltage, three phase voltage. So based on that, there are two types of induction motor, three phase induction motor and single phase induction motor. I'm, I'm also going to explain you why it is known as an induction motor. What is the meaning of induction? So let us first start with the three phase induction motor. Now why three phase induction motors are used? So three phase induction motors are widely used for industrial application. And the reason is that they have simple construction, long lasting construction, low maintenance, robust construction, rush construction. It is having a low cost as compared to the other types of motor. Efficiency, efficiency of three phase induction motor is very high. And it is a most important part of three phase induction motor is that it is a self starting. It does not require any starting mechanism. Once we switch on the supply voltage, it automatically starts. That this thing is not possible in the case of single phase induction motor which are not self starting and the maintenance is also low as far as the three phase induction motor is concerned. Now three phase induction motors uh, basically works on a rotating magnetic field, uh, rotating electrical machine and that is designed to operate on a three phase supply. Now both transformer and motors or electrical machines works on electromagnetic induction principle but Transformer is a static device which does not have any rotating part. So the construction of transformer is easy and understanding of transformer is easy as compared to the electrical machine that is a motor and generator because motor and generator is having a rotating part. So construction is complex as compared to the transformer and understanding is also complex. So there are uh, three phase induction motors are basically a electrical machine which is uh, designed to work on three phase supply. Uh, it is also three phase induction motor is also known as a asynchronous motor. The principle of operation of this motor is based on rotating magnetic field, production of rotating magnetic field that I am going to discuss in the next video lecture, how the rotating magnetic field is generated. In the case of transfer, magnetic field is not rotating. Here it is a rotating magnetic field. Now what is the construction of three phase induction motor? So basically any motor is classified into the two parts. It, uh, and similarly, the two, uh, two major part of three phase induction motors are the stator and rotor. As the name suggests, stator is a stationary part and rotor is a rotating part. Now, induction motor is having a two types of motor, uh, two types of rotor and based on that induction motors, three phase induction motors are further classified into the two parts. So here you can see entire assembly of three phase induction motor, there is a 3D view. This frame, you, this is the outside body of the induction motor, which is nothing but the frame of the motor. Uh, here you can see it consists of stator and it is. this is a rotor part. Now stator is fixed, it is supported by frame, you can see here. And rotor is mounted on the shaft. Both rotor and stator consist of slots in which coppers are placed, copper windings are placed. So there are two types of winding, stator winding and rotor winding. And with the, as I told you that rotor is mounted on the shaft, here some fan, fan blades are provided on both sides of the rotor. The purpose of the fan blade is to provide the cooling because when rotor gets rotated, uh, the heat is produced. So to provide the cooling, fan blades are provided and bearing is also there, uh, which is mounted on the shaft. And both the, this frame, uh, motor frame is both sides are packed by two bell, which is known as the end bell. 
so this is the entire assembly 3d view of the motor which consists of basically two parts stator rotor and stator is supported by uh, stator frame outside body motor frame now here you can say wiring cover terminal box is there where stator windings are brought out here and stator winding is provided supply rotor is a uh, mounted on shaft rotor is a rotating part stator is a stationary part now let us understand about the stator so this is a cut section of the stator of, uh, of st uh, three phase induction motor this outside body is nothing but the uh, frame and this is nothing but the uh, stator which consists uh, as i told you it is it is a stationary part of the motor now stator is not made up of single uh, piece it is made up of silicon steel stampings stampings are nothing but the thin lamination sheets so thin lamination sheets are joined together to form a stator stator is basically an you know, uh, cylindrical form which is supported by a motor frame when complete stator is assembled the slots are formed on the inner side of the stator you can see this is the stator frame and the inner side of the stator on the inner periphery in inner periphery of the stator slots are created and in these slots copper windings are placed stator winding is placed as i told you there are two types of winding stator winding and rotor winding now slots may be a open type closed type or semi open type three phase windings are uh, placed in the uh, slots of the stator as i told you three phase winding may be star connected or delta connected and these three terminals of the three phase windings are brought out to the terminal box here you can see where three phase supply is given so basically supply is given to the stator winding and because of the supply given to the stator winding electromagnetic flux will be produced that magnetic flux will be linking with the rotor and rotor will start to rotate that i am going to explain and that's why rotor is emf is induced in the rotor that's why these motors are known as the induction motor directly rotor is not apply supply but supply is applied to the stator but because of the magnetic flux, uh, flux produced by the stator winding that magnetic flux will cut the rotor and emf gets induced in the ro rotor as as per the faraday's law of electromagnetic induction so emf is induced in the rotor that's why and rotor will start to rotate and that's why these motors are known as a three phase induction motor the end of these windings are brought out to the terminal box where ac power is supplied as i told you so here you can see this is a complete uh, 3d view of the stator construction which consists of stampings this is one stamping steel stampings and all these steel, steel stampings are joined together to form a single piece of the stator and then after you can see here slots are there on the inner periphery of the st uh, stator and these uh, stampings are made up of low reluctance material like a silicon steel cast iron cast steel to minimize the losses in the motor now next one is a rotor so it is a rotating part of the motor here you can say there are two types of rotor as far as the three phase induction motor is concerned which is known as a squirrel cage type rotor and wound type rotor it is mounted on the shaft you can see both rotors are mounted on the shaft it comes and the uh, construction of the rotor core is a kind of hollow laminated core with slots on the outer periphery here you can see slots are there which are on the outer periphery of the hollow cylinder hollow cylinder and in the stator slots are on the inner periphery in these slots copper bars you can see or windings are placed the windings are placed in these slots which is uh, is called as a rotor winding and rotor windings may be of two types copper bars are placed or uh, uh, windings like a stator is also placed and based on that there are two types of rotor squirrel cage type rotor and wound type rotor or phase wound type rotor is there so first let us understand squirrel cage type of rotor so as the name suggests why it is known as a squirrel cage type of rotor so in this type of rotor on the outer periphery of the cylindrical rotor slots are skewed slots are there you can say inclined slots are there in which copper conductor molten copper conductors are placed so the rotor consists of laminated core with the skewed slots so slots are inclined the purpose of this skewed slot is to provide the quitter operation very smooth operation of the rotor magnetic humming can be minimized this is the purpose of this skewed slot so here you can see the inclined slots are there now here also rotor body is made up of silicon stamping steel stamping it is not a single piece but different kind of thin lamination sheets are joined together to form a hollow cylindrical rotor 
and uh, these stampings are made up of silicon steel to minimize the losses here you can see construction looks like the cage of the squirrel and that's why it is known as a squirrel cage rotor rotor conductors are permanently short circuited molten rotor conductors are placed in these cued slots and these rotor conductors are permanently short circuited on both the ends by means of metal rings or copper rings here you can see here metal ring is there here metal ring is there so both ends of the copper conductor are short circuited by means of end rings copper rings or metal rings and that's why it is not possible to add external resistance in the rotor circuit because both the ends are short circuited permanently so resistance of this kind of rotor is low and we cannot add any external resistance to this type of rotor this is a cut section of the uh, Rotor spiral cage motor. You can see, rotor. You can see here skewed skewed rotor slots are there. Uh, rotor is mounted on the shaft. Both the ends of the copper bar are short circuited by means of the end rings. And this this is nothing but the also cross sectional view of the rotor bars. Here you can see these are nothing but the rotor bars. And entire assembly is mounted on the shaft. Uh, slip ring and brushes are not required for this kind of uh, rotor because. external resistance uh, cannot be added both ends are short circuited so here slip ring and brushes are not required for this kind of rotor the construction is very simple you can see here and it is economical because the uh, uh, slip ring uh, and brushes are not there so cost is reduced it uh, requires a less maintenance this kind of uh, uh, rotor will be having a less maintenance long lasting is there This kind of rotor is basically used in the lathe machine, drilling machine. These are the application of spiral cage type of rotor. Now moving towards another type of rotor, there is a wound type rotor. Here, rotor is wound for same number of holes as that of stator. So here you can say the rotor is uh, again of cylindrical type. It consists of slots. The slots are not skewed. The axis of the slots are parallel to the axis of the shaft. So parallel slots are there. and in which uh, copper windings are placed the rotor is made up of laminations with uh, slots on the outer periphery in which three phase rotor winding is placed here rotor winding is connected in star connection and three remaining terminals are brought out which is brought out by means of brushes and slip ring because uh, rotor is a rotating part so slip ring and brushes are required the three phase the three phases are connected in star internally remaining three terminals are brought out as i told you and connected to the slip rings which is mounted on the shaft external resistance can be added over here because both uh, there are no copper bars are there there are no end rings so external resistance are added to the three remaining terminals of the star connected rotor winding and this the uh, resist well the value of the resistance can be varied and ultimately torque of the motor can be varied which is not possible in the case of squirrel kit type of rotor the slip rings are made up of copper and phosphorus bronze material now when rotor will start to rotate and it is under under normal running condition the slip rings will be short circuited so as uh, three phase regular winding is used over uh, here for rotor it is also known as a phase wound type of rotor and it is also known as a slip ring type rotor because of this kind of rotor it provides high starting torque so that's why it is used in elevators compressor these are the application of phase wound type of rotor now moving towards the comparison between slip ring motor slip ring type of motor and squirrel cage type of motor now motor three phase induction motors are classified based on types of rotor is used here slip ring more rotor is used so it is a slip ring motor here squirrel cage rotor is used so it is a squirrel cage motor now these are the different parameters based on that comparison is done uh, it is also known as a phase wound type rotor it is also known as a cage type of motor construction is very complicated because of winding is used here construction is simple because of copper bars are used resistance external resistance can be added in terms of phase wound type of rotor here external resistance are not can cannot be added because of the short circuited copper bars starting torque is very high which can be varied by means of external resistance starting torque is very low brushes are present because uh, windings are connected uh, the three phase winding is there so brushes are there brushes are not there maintenance frequency maintenance is required here construction is very simple brushes are not there slip ring is not there so less maintenance is required copper loss is very high in case of slip ring motor 
कॉपर लॉस इज लो एफिशिएंसी ऑफ दिस काइंड ऑफ मोटर इज लो एफिशिएंसी ऑफ स्पिरल गेट टाइप ऑफ मोटर इज हाई एज कंपेयर टू द स्लीपिंग टाइप मोटर स्पीड कंट्रोल इज पॉसिबल बिकॉज़ वी कैन ऐड द एक्सटर्नल रेजिस्टेंस हियर स्पीड कंट्रोल इज नॉट पॉसिबल बिकॉज़ वी कैन नॉट ऐड द एक्सटर्नल रेजिस्टेंस पावर फैक्टर इज लो इन द केस ऑफ स्लीपिंग टाइप मोटर एंड स्पिरल गेट टाइप मोटर पावर फैक्टर इज हाई cost is high because of uh, three phase winding is there brushes are there slipping is there for slipping type of motor spiral gear type of motor as less costlier as compared to the slipping type motor uh, it is used uh, in the cranes elevator where high starting torque is required it is used in lathe machine flow fan blower where low starting torque is required so that this is the comparison between uh, spiral type spiral gear type of motor and slipping type of motor so this is uh, all about the today's video lecture in this video lecture i have discussed about the introduction about the induction motor electrical machine three phase induction motor two types of three phase induction motor spiral gate type of induction motor and slipping type of motor and finally uh, we discuss the comparison between the slipping type of motor and spiral gate type of motor hope you have enjoyed the video see you soon in the next video of the electrical machine thank you for watching